Friday, you guys. Welcome to episode two of Instill a Mother. As you can see, I'm hype. I'm going to tell y'all in a minute why I'm hyped when we get to sweet and sour segment. But happy Friday. How y'all feeling? If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment. Tell me how you feeling this Friday. How was your week? Okay. It is July the 8th. And if you are watching, well, listening or watching this on July the 8th, it's my birthday. So I'm officially 29 years old. And in the moment that you're watching this, my hair does not look like my hair looks right now. Because right now. It's just in a slick back pony, but I promise you, I'm somewhere living my best life. Well, matter of fact, I could just tell y'all where I'm at. So I'm going to be in Houston on my birthday. This year, I really didn't want to do anything that was too much. I did go to Houston earlier this year in the end of March. However, I just went to go look at homes there. I didn't go to actually like, well, I did do a little exploring. I went with my friend. So we did explore, but my main purpose of going, because I wanted to look at the homes there. Anyway, that's besides the point. When you're listening to this, I am in Houston living my best life, having as many drinks as I want. Okay. So today's my birthday, you guys. And the the this episode is pretty much going to be about who I am outside of being a mother, y'all. So I'm going into year 29, which is so, 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 so important for me. And the reason why it's so important, well, you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm excited, y'all. If you can't tell, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, 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 I'm sorry. So as you know, we start every segment out with a sweet and sour. So I'm going to go ahead and let y'all know what my sweet and sour was for the week. Also, if you are listening to it on YouTube or watching it on YouTube, doing both on YouTube, leave a comment and let me know what was your sweet and sour of the week. And the sour, what did you do to turn it around? The sweet, what did you do to embrace it, to live in that moment, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let me take a sip of my drink right quick i have crown royal apple mixed with sprite i don't even know if this is like a good mixture y'all but i mean I've, I've been drinking it but i'm saying i don't know if this is supposed to be mixed together but it's mixed together today okay so let's start with the sweet as all well, no what did we start with last week the sweet so let's start with the sweet <laughs> so this week no i'm gonna start with the sour because i want the sweet is a reference to my podcast so i'm gonna start with the sour y'all let me calm down because i was if you watch an individual you'll see how excited i am <laughs> okay so let's start with the sour the sour actually happened today y'all let me tell let me tell y'all so Anybody that truly knows me know I am so fearful of bugs. I do not like bugs. It's something about it that just like, I don't like seeing them, hearing them, feeling them. I don't like even looking at them getting killed. It bothers me. You guys, it's so intense that ye when I say years ago, I mean years, over 10 years ago, I was I ain't going to say who house because I don't want y'all to think that they got bugs or something but like that. But I was at somebody's house and I had went in the garage and I looked up and it was a bug, like a cockroach, a water bug right there in the corner, like right above my head. And y'all still to this day, even though that was over 10 years ago, every time I walk in the garage, I look up because I'm like, <laughs> it's just I'm traumatized. But so yesterday... I open all the windows because I sage the whole house, right? So unbeknownst to me, did I say that right? Because that's my first time saying that word out loud. I've heard it, but I hope I said it right. But <laughs> I did not know that the dig on screen in the window fell out. So it literally was no barrier between the outside world and my house. So I go into my room. Y'all, why is it a wasp in my room? So, mind you, all week I have not been home alone. All week somebody has been here with me. Today was the first day I was able to get the house to myself and a wasp was accompanying me. So, you guys, I literally was on the phone with my sister freaking out because I just did not know what I was going to do. Like, am I supposed to kill it? Like, I can't kill it. Like, it's just, that's a non, I can't. I just can't do it. I can't, I can't bring myself 
to kill it. It's just too much. So here I am freaking out in the room and I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, I just did not know what to do. So I went to Home Depot and I was looking at the WAP spray. Everything said outdoor, outdoor spray, don't use indoor. You know why? Because wasp is not supposed to be indoor. They didn't have anything for me to use to kill the bug. So I asked a Home Depot worker there. and He was like, you know how somebody, they just like, you be like, how do you know this? But I asked him, I said, hey, I have a wasp in my house. And I just need to know what to get to kill it. So he was like, oh, all you need to do is get some solution and mix water, salt, vinegar, and Dawn dish soap. And he said that the soap and water weighs down the wings of the wasp and then you just step on it. And I was like, step on it? He was like, yeah. He said, because you have to actually kill it. It just weighs the wings down. So I was like, I can't step on it. I can't kill it. So he thought I was saying that as in a way of like, I'm a bug lover and I just can't see myself killing it. He was like, but you're looking for wasp spray. That's worse than the solution I just told you about. I said, I don't care about it dying. I don't want to kill it. So when I got home, I fixed the solution, you guys. And I just drenched it. I just pretty much drowned the wasp in it until it couldn't, I guess, breathe anymore. It suffocated because I was not stepping on it. I did not kill, I didn't step on it. I didn't kill it. And guess what? It's still sitting there until somebody else can pick it up because I'm not doing it. <laughs> so that was my sour for the week because that traumatized me. I mean, that took out a big chunk of my day because I just was like, I can't believe this happened. A wasp in the house? No. So I know somebody is out there like, girl, it's just a bug. Just kill it. No, y'all really do not understand. Like one day I was driving, driving in the car. The car was in motion. You guys, I looked down on my leg. It was a bug on my leg. Do you know I got out the car when it was still moving? I, I just can't. I can't. I can't do it. I'm sorry. <sighs> now we got that out of the way. Let's go into the suite. So you guys, I literally just uploaded my first podcast like 10 minutes ago. I am y'all, let me tell you. Okay. Okay. Let's just let, let's let's have a little chat. Y'all, this podcast is my baby. Like this took so much out of me for me to do, not like physically, but it took so much out of me emotionally and mentally. I literally had a breakdown to my friend before I launched it like a couple of days before because I just was I have never been this open with social media like yeah you know people have a peek into my life when I upload videos on YouTube and things like that but I, I censor myself a lot up there and I don't let people in too much so to be this open with everybody for the world to see and judge me oh my goodness like it literally was very emotional I don't care what people think. I don't care what people say, but I do know just, you know, I do know that that could be overwhelming with everybody opinions coming my way. So before I launch, I just make sure I pray. I make sure I set intentions over my podcast and I just let it go. I just let it go free on the internet. So I literally have my phone, like, if you watching visual, y'all, my phone is right there. And I, was, I put it over there for a reason because I didn't want to see all of the, like, anything that was coming my way as far as the notifications. I didn't want to see that. But I'm excited that I took this step, you guys, because this is something that has been on my heart for two years. Two years this has been on my heart for this podcast to get launched. I wrote it down two years ago. Even the name, I wrote it down two years ago. And all of this time, I've just been so hesitant with launching it because I'm like, nah, I can't be this open with people. Like, nah, I can't let people into my life like this. Like, nah, people going to judge me. People going to have this, that, and the third to say. And I just had to get to the point, you know, maybe God was putting it on my heart and in my mind to do that two years ago. And maybe I just wasn't ready at that time. But it stuck with me this whole, you know, it it stuck with me this whole time for me to do this podcast. And I'm so, so, so happy that I finally uploaded the first episode. So it's really important to me. So if y'all see me like so happy about it and you just thinking it's just a podcast, like so many people have podcasts. It's important to me, you know, and I I really my intention for this podcast is to, you know, help the next woman or help, you know, just anybody that it resonates with. Honestly, like I just want to 
be an example. And, you know, I have, I feel like a lot of the times people, you know, when I have like, when I go on trips and do different things or still go to the gym, people always say like, how, like, how do you still have time? How do you still do it? I can't do it. I don't have the time, blah, 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 blah. And I say blah, 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 because it's all excuses. I don't want to hear it. (laughs) If I have time, y'all, let me tell you, the whole first year that the twins was here, they were not in daycare. I still got my ASS up, went to the gym, and they stayed at the gym daycare while I was working out. During that time, COVID was like kind of, COVID still around, but during that time, COVID was kind of winding down just a little bit, but they stopped allowing the kids to stay in there for two hours and they only allowed them to stay for one hour. So I still went, even though they could only be in there for one hour, I still went. And then eventually as they got a little bit older, they allowed them to stay for two hours. I still went, no matter how tired I was, I was still working and I still was dealing with, you know, so my point is, if you if there's a will, there's a way. If you really want to do it, you will do it. Point blank, period. Now, as far as eating right, that's a whole nother story, okay? Like, I'm still struggling with myself with that. But when it comes down to the gym, I go to the gym every day. Every day. Like, today, I didn't go because I had so much to do with content-wise, putting up my first, you know, episode, things of that such. But for the most part, you can catch me in that gym every day, okay? So... It was just, I just wanted, what, 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 what was the reason of me bringing, oh, because I was telling y'all how you can still um, be a mom and still do different things. So when people always say that I'm always going out of town and such things like that, I'm like, baby, you ain't seen nothing because just wait, wait, wait until my life evolve into the place I wanted to evolve. So you're going to be like, baby, you ain't never home, never. Okay. So anywho, that was my sweet. <laughs> Let me take another sip, you guys. I'm not exactly sure what the name of this podcast is going to be yet, but the topic at hand is who are you outside of being a mother? I ask you that because when you become a mom, it is so like you consume so much of your life around your kids or your child, however many you have. You consume so much of your life around them that you can get lost. And I am going into year 29. Well, I'm in year 29 now that y'all watching this. (laughs) But I'm going into year 29. And I like I sat and thought about the fact of that all of my 20s and my teenage years up, you know, I, I was able to have like a life per se up until 16 years old when I got pregnant (laughs) but all of this all of these years I've been a mom and I really did not know what I liked what I didn't like what I wanted out of life what my purpose was in life and I never consumed myself with any of those things at all I just worked took care of my kids I would go out every now and then yeah I took my little trips every now and then but I still felt like my life didn't have purpose other than being a mom I feel like even when it came down to me going on vacations I would look so forward to going on vacations and then when I got back home you know and I'm so excited to go on vacations and then when I got back home that feeling of just no purpose would come right back and I didn't like that and it that's what made me launch my YouTube channel and start doing different things because for the longest you guys for the longest since I was a little girl I always said that I wanted to be an OBGYN but once I had a child I'm like I don't know if that's possible baby like (laughs) you gotta go to school for so long and you have to you know clinicals and things of that such Honestly, I'm not going to say it's not possible because I don't want to kill anybody's dreams out there. If if you if it's something you really, really, really want to do, then it is. But I just felt like for me, it wasn't possible. And 
I did finish college. I got my associates. I did get my high school diploma. But when it came down to like having like what I wanted to do out of life, other than what I thought I wanted to do was be an OBGYN, I didn't know. But I always knew that the feeling of working at my job, I knew that this was not going to be the end, but I didn't know what was next. So even when it come down to my YouTube channel, All Things Yvette, I started out doing that and I, it was beauty. I was just doing beauty, 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 like makeup because I never was into makeup. And then I just picked up when, when the Fenty foundation first came out, I tried it and I did my face and I was good at it and it came natural. And I just was like, okay, well, I'm good at it. I like to do eyeshadow and things of that such. So let me just start putting videos up about that. But then I got pregnant with the twins. So when I got pregnant with the twins, it was just like, like, it was just, you know, uh, what can I say? Like, <laughs> it was just, I didn't have time for all of that. So now I moved into a new home and I thought that I could do more lifestyle content, which I'm still doing. I still upload videos about the twins. I still upload videos about home decor. I still upload vlogs, but it still didn't give me that feeling that the podcast is giving me. Like, I don't want my All Things Event family to feel like that I'm neglecting y'all or that I don't want y'all like I'm, I don't like doing videos because that's not it. But this podcast is just me speaking my truth. So it's kind of more dear to my heart. But I say that to say I've been trying to find my purpose and what I like for some time now. And no, at the moment, at the very moment, things have not took off for me in my uh, my eyes the way I wanted to but I know for sure that that is gonna come and I'm just trying to prepare myself for it because I feel like my purpose in life is to be an example to other mothers and other young mothers or even teenagers that are not yet mothers yet to either one if you're not a mother yet and you feel like that you are gonna eventually fall into that trap of having sex and getting pregnant and things of that such or you're being careless you know I feel like I could be I can my current life can be an example of don't do that don't do that so it or if you are a young mom and you feel stuck and you feel like you can't do this that and the third because you are a mom I want to be an example that you can you can do it because one thing I hate, you guys, I hate when moms lose themselves and they don't do things that they like, like getting your hair done. Get, if this is what you like, if only if it's what you like, if you don't like it, then cool. But I'm saying like, if you if this is something that you like and you're just not doing it because you feel like you don't have the time or you just want to evolve your whole life around your kids. I don't like that. That makes me sad. I don't like that because it's like you are so much more than just a mother. Like what you going to do when your kids gone, baby? Like when your kids is gone, what is your life going to be? So I feel like, like I said in my first video, everything has to be a balance. For example, when it comes to my nails, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I get my nails done. Like people be coming to me like, who do your nails? Who do your nails? Who do your nails? Because I keep my nails done. That is something that I like to do. I literally book my nail appointments out for a year, a year. I get my nails done every four weeks. I do not play. <laughs> that is something that I like to do. Now, my hair, that's a different story because it's not that I don't have the time to do it, but it's just, I don't be knowing what I want in my hair half the time. But, you know, even going down to the gym, that's something simple that I like to do. So I just feel like if you are a mom and you feel like that you just want to evolve your life only around your kids or you feel like you can't get a break or you feel bad if you are getting a little break, don't feel bad because it truly makes me sad when moms say that they can't do this and they can't do that. I'm here to tell you, you can do whatever the hell you want to do. Okay? Do 
whatever you want to do. Ask yourself, what truly fulfills me? What do I want to do? What? Like, just ask yourself and don't be scared of what you would say. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you can't you can't be saying that I just don't want to have kids if you got kids. Because, baby, unfortunately, we already here. But <laughs> just ask yourself with the circumstances that you are currently in, what is it that you truly want to do? And I feel like so often we work we operate out of fear which is something that i've been operating out of forever you guys like going into year 29 is so important for me because i have given all of my years to not only kids but to men to men you guys i remember i was in elementary school and you know my space they had the pages to where you can have like a a uh, song on your MySpace page, right? Y'all, tell me why the song I had listed was unappreciated. Who who is unappreciating you, Yvette? You are in third grade. I remember my mom and my dad pull up the <laughs> They pull up my MySpace page and they say, What do you know about being unappreciated? Y'all, I was my little Phyllis was hurt, okay? Bobby from third grade, y'all. I caught him on a playground kissing somebody and I just I couldn't take it. But it's just, I always was consumed with either men, boys, obviously, or kids. I didn't know what I wanted. Like all of, like literally, let's just talk about the 20s within itself. All of my 20s was consumed of being in a relationship, being unhappy, and being a mother, going to work. You know, it, and I never felt like that I was doing anything that was fulfilling me. I always felt like that it was something missing. So I had to ask myself, what do you truly want to do? And let's be honest, even when I was launching the the YouTube where it was like doing beauty and things like that, I was just doing that because I felt like I was good at it. And I seen that influencers was making money, but it wasn't my passion. And I feel like so often. So, more often than not, we have a story that we could tell and help other people. And one thing I have heard somebody say before is that your passion or your, sorry, your purpose is whatever is going to help others. And I feel like this purpose of mine as being a young mom and showing other young moms that you can do it, you can still live the life that you want. That is a purpose for me. That is my passion because I can't, rewind time I can't change the course of my life all I can do is change what's going forward unfortunately the four kids I have I mean baby they stuck they stuck like glue like I can't get rid of them so I just have to accept it for what it is and make life the best that it can be but I had to ask myself Yvette what do you want to do what do you want to do? So I started doing things that I like. For example, reading. I mentioned that in my last, po last podcast. That's something that I truly like to do. I used to go to the library when I was little and get stacks and stacks and stacks of books. And now, of course, the genre of books have changed. But honestly, starting to read more and fill my mind with more positive things and learn different things is what got me here as far as changing my mindset. Because at first, I wasn't filling my mind with anything positive. I wasn't filling my mind with anything that would change the way that I think. And just looking at my environment and the people around me, it, it made me feel like nothing else was out there. And I'm not saying that the people around me, like, they bums or anything. Like, don't go beat me up, y'all. I don't want y'all to think I'm calling y'all bum because that's not it. But I'm just saying, like, the like the only thing I saw what was what was what it was <laughs> the only thing I saw was what was around me and it is so much more to life than that and it wasn't until recently that I just it, it really hit home for me that I'm supposed to be doing more than what I what I'm doing let me tell y'all something that happened to me recently so I was at the gym and the whole time I was at the gym, like, I just felt like I kept getting this, like, something just kept saying over and over my mind, like, just do it, just do it, just do it. And at the time, 
this is my podcast that I was thinking about because I was nervous. I was nervous to launch it. I didn't know what people would think or what people would say. And I didn't want to be judged. So it was a lot for me to put myself out there. And it's one thing being judged of, you know, of people that is just around you. And it's another thing to be judged by thousands or possibly millions of people. So that hits a whole nother level. And when I was at the gym, I kept hearing something that just said, just do it. Just do it, Yvette. Just do it. Stop being fearful. And that same week I asked God, I said, God, please just give me something in my dreams, a sign, something, something to show me like what I supposed to be doing in life or if this is what I supposed to be doing. So later that week, my friend that I haven't talked to literally for over a month, she texted me randomly one morning. And she was like, hey, good morning. She was like, have you been something along the lines of living out my spiritual gifts? And I was like, what? What are you talking about? Because <laughs> I'm like, what spiritual gifts? So then we end up talking on the phone and she was like, Yvette, literally in my dream verbatim, she said, in my dream, it was somebody kept telling me, tell Yvette, just do it. And she was like, whatever it is, you just need to go for it. And mind you, this is somebody I have not even discussed the podcast with. I have not. She doesn't even know what I'm trying to do. So for her to say that and come to me and I haven't talked to her for over a month, it was just mind blowing. And, you know, I have put over my podcast that I wanted to be prosperous and I wanted to be successful. But it goes deeper than that. And, you know, it really saddens me, you guys. And I could almost cry. It saddens me that when you become a mom, you lose yourself. Like, even to this day, I call my mom and I'll talk to her about things. And she she will even say, like, she, you know, after she had kids, she just, all she focused on was her kids. That's it. Not what she wanted to do out of life. And one thing I don't want to do is get older and look back and be like, man, like I missed out on my purpose in my life just because I was a mom. Like it's, it's not, you know, and then you start to resent, not your kids, but you start to resent yourself because it's like, why, why did I do that? So, you know, I encourage anybody to ask themselves, like, who are you? What do you like? What do you like to do? What don't you like? What do you want out of life? Where do you want to live? Do you want to go somewhere? Like all of these things that you really want. And don't base it around your child. Don't feel like that once you have a child that that's the end all be all and you no longer have yourself. Because let me tell you, that is something that we like everything that we learn, you guys, is something that we are conditioned to learn. We are put that thought, whatever it is, is put onto us. And one thing I remember is when I was pregnant, it was Christmas time. And I remember one of my family members was like, once you have this baby, it's no longer about you. It's no longer about you. Like, it's no longer about you at all. <laughs> and I always thought that. And I hear people say that. I recently heard somebody say, once you have a child, it's not even going to be about her anymore. She's she's not going to matter. It's just going to be all about her kids. And I cringed because it's like, it's not just about your child. It's about you too. It's about, it's important to, to who, who, like to have your own identity because your kids will like, listen, I have seen my mom stress over her. My mama, listen, we don't put my mama do some things, honey. Okay. So, <laughs> I have seen her stress over her kids. And even though I'm not saying that you're not going to stress over your kids, but it just gets to a point that you have to let your kids be themselves. At the end of the day, they're their own person. And you can't control their life. You can't, like, you can guide them to what they should do out of life. But at the end of the day, you can't control their life. They're going to be their own person and they're going to get older and live their own lives. And, and who are you going to be then? Because then you're going to be stuck in the house and be like, man, my baby don't even call me no more. They don't come spend time with me no more. Like, I'm lonely. What do I do? And it's like, people will say, yeah, once they turn 18, I'm in these streets. But if you condition yourself for all of these years to revolve your life just around your kids, guess what? 
when when they when they gone, you gonna be like, I miss them. I wonder what they're doing. I hope they're okay. I mean, regardless, you are gonna wonder if they're okay. But you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be so consumed around your kids, and I don't want that for anybody. Like, <laughs> go to <do> you, <laughs> like. You know, go have fun. Go to that happy hour. Go to the gym. Sign up for that gym membership. Go on that vacation. Have that self-care Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whatever day it may be. Run you a bath water. Read you a book. Whatever. Whatever it is that you feel like that you want to do that you have been putting off because you feel like you have kids, do it. One thing I heard Tabitha Brown say recently was that when she was trying to pursue being an actor and the different things that she wanted to do in life, she was worried about, you know, neglecting her role as a mom and as a wife. But she had to tell herself, like, listen, they will be fine. And I feel like moms especially beat ourselves up so much about just living. You know what I'm saying? Doing something that we want to do. Like... <laughs> You never know. It could be something that changed the life of your whole family. Hence, Tabitha Brown, because, baby, she got everything. She doing everything. I'm like, dang. Every time I turn around, it's like she putting out something new. So it's like you never know. You know what I'm saying? If you are trying to better yourself, I guarantee you it will make you a better mother and it will make you a better mother for your children. And I feel like especially as moms, we always get the short end of the stick where we're looked at as bad if we do certain things. But I I feel like personally, and this is going to be me sounding like a man basher, but I feel like dads don't get that same hate. You know what I'm saying? I feel like dads can be out here doing this, that, and a third or, you know, pursuing their jobs and being gone for an extended amount of time, and it's okay as long as the child is home with the mom. But you don't see it a lot of the times of where the mom is pursuing their life or their goals and they're home with the dad. And, yes, we would love to say that once you become a mom, you can – drop everything and be a mom but that's not realistic you guys like how it's not realistic even nowadays with the price that prices of things is to even be a stay-at-home mom you we not seeing that as often the cost of living baby i just spent six hundred dollars in the grocery store the cost of living is crazy so moms can't just you know if you can girl kudos to you hey but I know personally for me, I can't do that. I go to work. So it's like, but I make sure that I have a life outside of my kids. I make sure I go to the gym. You know what I'm saying? And I make sure that I do things that I like, whether that's reading, reading a book. I mean, I just said that. Reading, taking a shower. If I look, I'm good for going to um window shop, y'all. I'm good for going to TJ Maxx, Home Goods, whatever. And just window shopping. That's something that I really like, really, really like to do. So it's like, what do you like to do? It can be something so simple, something so simple. But I encourage everybody to be still and have quiet time to where they can figure out what their purpose is in life. And if you 100% genuinely just enjoy being a mom and like just that's it, you know, you don't have no desire to do anything else 100%. And I, I, I say that 100% because I feel like sometimes we feel like that we're supposed to be doing something. So we accept that for what that is and feel like, okay, this is just what I'm going to do. But I'm not really genuinely happy, but I'm just content. Like, I'm just going to do this. So I say 100% because make sure this is something that you truly, truly, truly want to do. Because... If it's not something that you want to do, it's always going to be in the back of your mind. And eventually you're going to have to come face to face with that one day and be like, man, like I really missed out on this opportunity or missed out on the life that I really wanted for myself or missed out on things that made me happy. Because at the end of the day, we all going to die. And I know that sounds so bad, but we I mean, it's a life cycle. Like we're all going to die. So it's like make the best out of your life as it is right now. And just don't give a F what nobody thinks. Like. I'm not, I, listen, I'm not, let me tell you, I'm not encouraging anybody out there to be a bad mother. You need to take care of your responsibilities, point blank, period. You need to spend time with your kids. 
you need to make good options. I mean, not good options, good choices for them. But I just say that the kids is not the end all be all because guess what? My kids have a bad time. They go to bed at a certain time. At a certain time, it's mommy time. I don't want to hear nothing else. It's mommy time. Okay. And, and whatever that looks like for me is mommy time. Whether it's watching a TV show, reading a book. I keep saying reading a book because I love reading, y'all. I'm sorry. But reading a book, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, even going to the gym, sitting in a sauna, you know, simple things or going on vacation. You a mom 365 days out the year, baby. It's okay to go on a five-day vacation. It's okay. It is okay. And if anybody say it's not okay, forget them. I'm telling you, it's okay. So, I say that all to say year 29 is about me, okay? It's about me, and I'm doing whatever makes me happy. I'm putting fear to the side, and whatever it is that I want to, want to embark on, I'm going to do it, regardless of whoever or whatever may think, whatever. Like, I don't care. I'm going to do it, and... This is my last year in my 20s, and I'm ready for my 30s, but I'm going to enjoy this last year in my 20s because it's my last year, and I have dedicated all of my 20s to being a mom and to men, and I'm done doing that. So cheers to 29, you guys. I hope I am currently, I'm looking at my future self. I hope I'm currently enjoying a drink maybe some hookah or something something <laughs> because my birthday i'm so excited y'all i'm excited for this journey man like y'all just don't know how much fear i had to put to the side for this like yeah <laughs> so i'm doing me and whatever that looks like is what's going to be put out there so i'm doing me and on top of that, whatever I do and however I do it, at the end of the day, guess what? I'm still a mother. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the last segment, you guys, which is me telling you guys something that I read this week that resonates with this episode. So now, honestly, I don't think I'm going to read this to y'all because it's a lot. And I don't want y'all to think this is this is not real time at your kid's school. So I don't want to be sitting here just reading. But the book is Untethered Soul. If you are watching this visually, I am showing the book on the screen. It's Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And the episode that I am, not episode, Lord Jesus. The chapter is chapter three and it's called, can y'all see it? no <laughs> it's no okay y'all ain't gonna be able to see it anyway it's the chapter is called who are you and this chapter pretty much talks about it it does a, it, it gives a lot of examples but just to sum it up so i can tell y'all what it's saying it's saying outside of being a title, so you can't say you're a mom, wife, sister, friend, brother, dad. You can't say that. You can't say your location. You can't say your age. You can't say your occupation. So I can't say, hi, I'm Yvette. I'm 29. I have four kids, and I like such and such, and I work at such and such. Like, well, not like. I can, I can say what I like, but I can't say, like, I can't attach myself to a title. So, like, I can't say I'm a cashier. I'm not a cashier, but I'm just using an example. I can't say I'm a cashier. I can't say I'm a mom. I can't say I'm a wife. I can't say I live in such and such. Like, I can't say any of those things. So, outside of all of that, who are you? So, I encourage everybody that is listening to do this scenario who are you outside of your titles um more so in this chapter it's pretty much talking about how we are all human beings having a spiritual experience but when I read it how it resonated with me is I asked myself outside of saying that I'm Yvette I'm this old 
I live this place and I'm have this many kids. Who am I? What do I like to do? What do I feel like my purpose is? That's how it resonated with me and spoke to me. And I feel like in the courage, I encourage anybody out there to do the same thing because who you are is not in relation to your title. Because if you say my name is Catherine, okay, Catherine, so you are a Catherine, like you're these letters. No, you're not. So who, like your soul, who is your soul? Who are you? So also outside of even just that chapter, I encourage everybody to read this book, you guys, because it's such a good book. It is such a good book. I mean, it really tells you and breaks down how just to not be bothered by the outside world and other people because at the end of the day we all have control over us like that's the only people we have control over is us so i that runs it back to say just like we only have control over us you don't have control over your kids or anybody else so that's why you have to put you have to feed and put what you love into yourself because at the end of the day you guys this sound bad but we like you matter the most over everything you matter the most so just you know ask yourself what does a fulfilled life look for me and am i fulfilled at this moment what does it look like to be my highest self meaning if you had to write down a, of how you wanted your day to look like for you like and, and no and nothing was off limits how would that look for you so that's it for this episode, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, I'll see you all next week. Enjoy your Friday, y'all. I'm about to have me a little drink, drink, baby. A little do a little. No, I ain't gonna do no two step, baby, because I can't dance. But anyway, I ain't staying in the house this Friday. So I'm about to go enjoy my Friday. I hope you guys enjoy yours. And I'll see you all next week. Bye. <laughs>